You are listening to the National Sexual Violence Resource Center Just Rural podcast series that highlights innovative programs and success stories from rural communities across the United States. This is Cindy Simpson, Rural Project Specialist with the National Sexual Violence Resource Center. This interview was recorded on Thursday, June 10, 2010 with Chief Investigator John Haynes of the City of Durant Police Department in Durant, Mississippi. Investigator Haynes is a community partner of a rural grantee agency, the Community Students Learning Center of Lexington, Mississippi. The Community Students Learning Center is implementing a mentoring and peer support program to end intimate partner violence among teens. So I know a little bit about your program in Mississippi, and I'd like to hear more from you about that. And also for you, based on your role with the program, what has been a real learning moment for you, a, a good success story, or a moment that really shines for you since your project has begun? Actually, I, I came on, uh, on board with the program uh, a little over a year and a half ago. And the, the thing that has struck me most is I was not aware of the type of violence that was, that was going on within our youth. And because of the uh, board that's structured, we have a lot of school personnel on that board. And most of these uh, offenses never reach law enforcement, but they talk with the student counselors and teachers about things that other people are going through in the community. And we realized that those were uh, instances of uh, domestic abuse and sexual abuse. And just the, the knowledge was not there for me. So it, it was a big experience to know that all this was going on in our rural communities. And it sounds like that was a surprise to you. It was. It was. Um, and so often the myth is that these things don't happen in rural communities and mm -hmm. it's so much safer in rural communities and it's really just taboo to, to know that it does. And, and I was one of those who didn't realize these things were happening to our kids. Because again, they never get reported to law enforcement because of the fact that, especially with teens, they don't see the dangers and, and the things that they're going through. They just seem to think that it's uh, youthful dating and fun, so. Really, it's almost normalized for them in some ways? Pretty much, that's, that's a better way of saying it, yes. Mm -hmm. And so, what is your role in the program, or how do you interact with the program? My role, basically, is um, as, a, as a respectful person in the community. I uh, coach Little League basketball, and I'm also a referee, and, I've met with coaches and what we've done is to in, in institute young men learning uh, from other men in the community and to be involved in this youth camp, they have to attend domestic violence courses after uh, every week of basketball. We have a man-to-man -man conference and we talk about the dangers and what not to do and to try to stay away from the pitfalls of uh, sexual abuse and the peer pressure of um, having sex at all. Okay, and um, what has been, can you think about a particular story or a time or a, a young person that you've interacted with that really stands out for you? There, there are really so many. Um, the one that, that I would think that um, stood out more, most with me is that um, this young man was dating uh, the young lady and um, it, it just seemed so innocent as far as everyone was concerned that um, he would uh, strangle her. And, and the po most people think it's choking. They were both athletes and after every game they would talk or laugh and if they he would call her out of her name and uh, choke her. And these were things that you know, I started noticing and seeing, and I, I went to him and talked to him about him, and um, he has a younger sister, and um, I told him that 
these things are, are dangerous. These are things that people uh, would see somewhere else as being detrimental to you staying free. And about two days later, he called me and he told me that his younger sister had been assaulted by a guy that was uh, living with the family. Uh, they weren't actually kin, but, but he was living there because he was from another state. And, and what he said was these were the lessons that he learned from this guy. And now that he could see, once I t told him what was going on, he could see the dangers in them. And, um, you know, that taught him the lesson that he didn't want to go down the path that this young man has gone down. So that that's maybe one of them, because this guy has a future uh, uh, in athletics, and, and uh, it would have been a shame for him to have gotten caught in something just because of his uh, inability to know that it was uh, not a good thing to know to do. So it sounds like um, your program is giving youth really strong messages about what is acceptable and what is unacceptable behavior. And that's what we're trying to do, yes. Yes. Is there anything else you'd like to share about the work that you've been doing? Not, nothing, nothing else out of the ordinary that anyone else is doing. We're just trying to get it all formulated and, you know, get it to where we are doing a lot better job and, and to um, see some, any of this happening within our communities. Well, thank you very much for sharing. It was great to hear. Thank you. This project was supported by grant number 2009-TA-AX-K042 awarded by the Office on Violence Against Women, U.S. Department of Justice. The opinions, findings, conclusions, and recommendations expressed in this program are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Department of Justice, Office on Violence Against Women. For more information on our rural project, visit www.nsvrc.org.